Hello and welcome to Hobson Bros. This week, Kolsch, Kolsch, Kolsch. How do you pronounce Kulsh. it? Kolsch, Kolsch, Kolsch. Actually, it's it's easier for me and you, Chris, to pronounce because the the O in Kolsch is pronounced like Beth in French. Oh, so Kolsch, Kolsch. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, talking about yeah. Kolsch today, or this week, or yeah. For an open window on the crowded world Max and Chris from Ups and Ups and Welcome to Ups and Bros! Yeah. yeah! So yeah, when, uh, so every semester in class we have um, a sensory class where we basically go through uh, sensory analysis of beer. First semester was flavors in general. Second semester is more focused on different style and the BJCP or Brew Judge Certificate Program. Uh, and one of them is the coach uh, or the coach. And the teacher had the, the slide on the on the the board, and it said pronounce the O like U uh, uh, in Biff. And I was like, oh, I can say that, so I said it. And he's like, and he just pointed me out. He's like, you. You said it exactly correct. I'm like, yeah, well, it's French. You know? I'm French. It's just, you know? <laughs> it's, I guess it's a it's another good point for us for knowing French at the same time and doing beer. We, it, we get all the fancy is, words from Belgians and all that stuff. It's cool. Yeah, exactly. And But then some other word came up for some other style of beer and I couldn't pronounce it for shit. So, I mean, you know, you win one, lose some. It is what it is. So, this week, the coach. The coach. 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 I have a lot of issues pronouncing coach. Yes, coach. Coach. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's like the the um, Gosa or uh, oh yeah or uh, goes or whatever, right? It's a c- yeah. kind of, of beer that people have their own way of pronouncing it. Uh, I don't think there's a wrong way, although technically there is. It's just you know go with what you can say. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, don't don't limit yourself to not ordering it because you can't say it. Someone's going to correct you at some point. Exactly. And you should order it and you should order it the proper way. Um, but without, before I get into this, um, Kirsch is originated from Germany in the town of Cologne, which is uh, mostly known for their Kirsch. So um, the reason why is because Kirsch is a term, but also a method protected uh which with something that's called pdi um which means that kirsch can't be brewed or produced uh outside of 50 kilometer uh, round circle around the town of cologne um yeah so it's it's an appellation concept a little bit like you can't have a trappist beer uh, but you can have an abbey beer so you can't have a kirsch but you can't have a lagered ale even though it's going to be the exact same product even though uh kolsch style beer is accepted so just not call it straight okay, up okay, kolsch. yeah kirsch style as long as you have style after it then it will be accepted you're saying exactly okay so Mostly, it's a very simple concept. It's really keen to this town of Germany, Cologne. And it's been around for a while. And because of that, people are really, really religious about the way they serve their beer. So, yes, I'm not serving my Kölsch properly, but it's not very a real cool Kölsch, Kölsch, Kölsch. Which one are you drinking? Um, the Offenkölsch from uh, Offenkölsch from uh, La, La Volée from Gallicus, our friend Sammy. So cheers, Sammy. Very good. Oh, yeah, I, I had that last time I was in uh, Ottawa. It's, um, it's great. It's actually really nice. It's a little more, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little hoppier than most Kölsches that you would have, uh, as, as that beer usually is a little more uh, balanced between the malt and the hops, although some hop aromas will uh, be present, but not necessarily as aggressive. Uh, but no, I, I like that interpretation. I like it. It's, it's kind of a... Um, it's bottle condition too. Like it's, it's a nice, good challenge, like a good challenging beer to brew. And Sammy really nailed it on this one. Cheers. Very good. Very definitely. good. Definitely. Cheers, Sammy. Um, yeah. So mostly, I haven't served the coach, pro- the coach properly. And uh, the right way to serve the coach is in a six ounce glass that it's made like a cylinder, a little bit like a microphone, really tiny. And the reason why is because they want to uh, preserve their carbonation in the beer by serving smaller portions in those little glasses. And if you haven't add a, a Kirsch in those glasses, it's really 
uh, mind blowing. It's different. Like you do drink a lot faster, but over there they are trained to fill up your glass as soon as it's empty. That's why you need to be aware to if you're done drinking, Max. What do you do? Well, you put your coaster on top of the glass. It's it's an interesting concept, uh, and. and I mean, Germany doesn't half-ass anything. Uh, they want the most quality product. They won't accept any off flavors in their beers. Uh, and they want their beers to be as perfect as possible when you're enjoying it. So that's why for the Kölsch in specific, they have this concept. Those, those little six ounce glasses that are, they, they constantly, you know, you're empty, get a new one. Because they're also known for the big steins. The big like 20, uh, um, 20 liters? No. Two liters or whatever, yeah, two, two liters, liter glasses. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of a, a, a in between those. There's also a big war between ales and lagers in Germany because Germany is known for lagers. But before they were known for lagers, uh, they excelled at brewing ales. Um, so, so the Kirsch is kind of the answer to the Pilsner, uh, trying to get the smoothest flavors from your ale and yeast without compromising in some of those nice esters. Um, and it's also... Uh, yeah, so the, the, the response to the pills are trying to make a, a very crushable beer. Uh, it's kind of weird because within the ages, uh, we've kind of converted all our ales to lagering. Because lagering is not technically a, a yeast strain per se. It's a technique in which you brew your, you ferment your beer cooler. Uh, nowadays, we don't necessarily ferment all our beers cooler, but what we do is call it what, what's called cold crashing. A cold crashing will bring all the yeast uh, and, and kind of have it uh, go down to the bottom of fermenter in the cone uh, where you can bottom crop, which means you're going to take some of that yeast and then you can pitch it somewhere else or you can start growing it for your next batch kind of deal. But Ale yeast was never meant to be that way. Ale yeast was always a, a, a top cropping concept where as soon as you have the foam that forms on top of your fermenter, you take a little bit of that, you crop the good yeast, and then you propagate in the next fermenter. It's not necessarily the best way to do unless you're very much set up for top cropping. Um, yeah, not all breweries. Really getting the best... Huh? Not all breweries have open, open top fermentation. Like the, it's, if you don't set up your brew for, yeah. for, for open top fermentation, uh, it, it's kind of impossible to do top cropping or it's going to be very hard and you're going to kick yourself in the ass for even trying it. But at the same time, when you're, you're gathering all that yeast at the bottom of the fermenter, which yeast do you use? Which is going to be the good one? Because this yeast is not meant to, to kind of fall down. I mean, it's still going to be good. It's a lot easier than any other techniques, but it's not going to be your prime yeast. Your prime yeast was a couple of days ago when you had your Krausen on top. That was the yeast you wanted to take to, pee, to ferment your next beer. Um, we'll talk about a little more about that in, in a yeast-driven episode, but it, it's just a little parenthesis, a little intro on like kind of the weird war that ales and lagers have had in Europe, especially in Germany, to try to make the smoothest, most drinkable beer. And it kind of, uh, the, the you know, butterfly flaps at her wings and there's a tornado on the other end of the world uh, through time and whatever. It's just... Nowadays, we're seeing the effects and we keep on seeing those effects. Yeah, exactly. You, you dive so deep in one subject again and you were complaining that you had not a lot to say about uh, Kirsch in general. Oh, that's all I got. I mean, there's nothing else. <laughs> it's deep. It's, it's, From this point on, Chris, it's, it's, just, it's all you, buddy. You dropped the grenade <laughs> with the knowledge. Uh, to sum things up with Kirsch, uh, Kirsch, Kirsch, Kirsch. I think it's a very good, nice, easy drinking beer. Um, I don't know, for me, Kirsch always represented a really nice, easy drinking, but also kind of like an homage to what uh, Germany has to offer into more drinkable beers. And uh, I know Pilsner's is also a really good way to do it, but there's also a really good interpretation of Pilsner's uh, in Czech Republic, which is completely different. So that's why I think Kirsch is, feels a little bit more German in my mind. It's, it's me. Uh, with the noble notes of uh, the hops in there, a little bit of the sweetness, like the balance of this beer when it's well done, it's crazy impressive. So I think- And, like, and I have to say yeah. that most of you who are watching right now have had a, a coach. If you've had the Lug Shred from Bose, which they've been around for about 10 years and most people I talk to have had at least one of them, it is technically a coach. They don't call it that, they call it the Lagered Ale, but uh, all the, 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 the flavor profile kind of points towards coach. Uh, and it's a great interpretation, if you ask me. Uh, although with the their, their concept of being organic, you get 
kind of different flavors from them that you wouldn't necessarily get from your run of the mill coach. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's a great beer and, and as you said, very refreshing. It's a, it's a great answer to the pills and a great answer to the lager. Uh, you can still have a very refreshing beer that's not intrusive, that's not over estuary uh, and still have an ale yeast. It's, uh, it's worth trying out. If you guys out there, whether you are uh, at the other end of the world or right here in Ottawa, uh, there's Kirsch available everywhere. It's, I think it's a style that's a lot easier to kind of like move around and everyone has already drank one. So it's very fun to just dive a little bit deeper into the history behind it, where it came from, but also the science behind it, which Max pointed out perfectly again which uh that's off which i don't have a hot a oh hat, you're sure we've it's... never done this episode before on yeah Kush? never done that huh i'm pretty sure Neat. but if if not this one is a lot better already right <laughs> but, uh, if you look back at those like a year or two years ago like oh oof we learned a yeah, lot. Don't look back. No, we're very, we live in the present, you know? There's no point in looking back. Anyways, thanks exactly. for watching. Uh, are you, we're all done, Chris? Oh, I'm all Anything done. You, you can close off the video, Max. Okay. I'm all done, yeah. Perfect. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the video, please click the like button, subscribe. Let us know in the comments below which one-on-one you'd like to see in the future. Um, and let us know what your favorite Kolsch is. Yeah. would love to know. That's a good, a relative question. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. I cheers, but I don't have anything. I-5. Oh, missed it again.